Hello and welcome back. My name is Lupi and today I will be showing you guys how to make a 9 pin button combination lock in Minecraft. So without further ado, let's get in to this video. Before I show you the redstone, this is how it works. You're each going to need your own combination. Mine is an X, just like so, and the door will open. Once you've gone through, you press this to close it, and if you ever want to come out again, you press this. If somebody has been messing with the buttons beforehand like this, just randomly spamming them, then all you have to do to fix that is press the reset button. Once you've pressed the reset button, it should work as normal again. All you have to do is put in your combination again, and it should open. One other thing to note is that you can't press each and every button and then it will open. You can only press the ones that you have specified, otherwise it won't work. This is really useful because unlike many other designs, you can just press every single button and the door will open. Admittedly, it makes it a lot more complicated, but it's definitely worth it because what's the point in a combination lock if it doesn't actually do its job? Now that you know how it works, we can take a look at the redstone. So what we've got here to make sure that each one is activated individually is an RS null latch. And what they do is they pass this item from this dropper into this dropper. This comparator will then detect that that dropper has something in it and unpower this redstone torch. So the little circuit system thing that we've got here is something that I've created that detects whether you want the button pressed or unpressed. In this case, these two are the ones that you want pressed and this is if you don't want it to be pressed. Then the idea is replicated on each layer going down as we have three layers. Then each layer is connected up with AND gates to make sure that this, this and this layer has to be correct for this torch to turn on. Once this torch is turned on, the redstone line will turn on, deactivating this torch and powering this torch, which will then open this door here. The next thing I had to work out then was the reset system, because that is very, very important. So on the other side of this red block, you have a redstone line which leads up to this torch here, which will in turn power these three droppers. The reason why we've got blocks above them rather than just redstone lines on the dropper is because without them it would activate these bottom droppers as well and then it wouldn't power anything. This redstone line also powers this along here and it's the same concept, it's just moving the item into this dropper here. Then the redstone line moves down into here which if it's powered it will unpower this torch unpowering this redstone line, unpowering all of this, which will in turn power this redstone torch and it will power again these droppers, moving the item into the top droppers. It was quite hard making the reset system whilst also making it compact, but in the end I got there. And just in case any of you were wondering how this button closes this door, it is also using the reset system, but it's just activating it from a different side. So, I've shown you the redstone and I've shown you how it works. Now, all that's left to do is to show you how to make that redstone. We're going to start things off with a 3x3 area, just like so, with an extra one there. We're then going to place buttons on each block, just here, like so. Then, once we've done that, we want three droppers facing upwards, just like that. Then, we'll place two temporary blocks, like that, remove one, and place a dropper facing down. We can then remove this temporary block and place two more droppers facing down. Then on the second row, we'll place three droppers facing this way, two temporary blocks, and another two temporary blocks. We can remove this temporary block here. Then we want to go underneath and place droppers facing towards us, just like that. Now we should have two sets of droppers, each facing towards each other. Next, we'll go underneath and place droppers facing down like this. Then place a row of temporary blocks like that. And again, place them facing towards each other, just like so. This is the beginning of our RS nor latch. Next, we need to choose whether we want to press the button or to not press the button. That is the question. So, we're going to place a row of blocks just here with comparators facing outwards like that. 
Then if we want this button to be pressed, so it would be this one here, then we would put a block just here. If we don't, we're going to place a block here with a repeat on it facing that way. If we want these two buttons to be pressed, which in my case I do because I want X like that, then I want to put a block here and a block here. These two will have torches on them just like that. Then this repeater will run into a block like that with redstone dust along it like so. We're going to leave this bottom layer how it is for now and we're going to move on to the other layers now. For the next layer, we're going to do nearly the exact same thing, but instead of having comparators running straight out of the droppers, we're going to have a line of blocks with redstone dust on top of them. Then we can add in our comparators just like this, comparator facing this way, this way, and this way. And we need to remember what our combination is. Mine, which is the X, we want this one to be pressed, but not these two. If that's the case, we're going to have a block just here with a redstone torch on it, just like that. Then we'll have two coming out like that, each with repeaters facing that way. The ones with repeaters on will have blocks just here and then have a line of blocks along here. We have redstone dust on each of those blocks. Then we can move on to the very top layer. For the top layer, we're gonna to have to adjust things slightly because we have a redstone line here and it can get in the way. We're still going to start things off with our comparators facing out here and if you have a button being pressed it is still the same where you have a redstone torch on these two blocks and a repeater coming out of here. The difference is though we have an L shape here with redstone dust along here like so. The reason why we can't go below is because you can't actually place blocks just there. Now that we've got all of our systems in place, they need linking up. But before doing that, we need our door and room. The door should be placed one block between the combination lock for it to work properly with the redstone that I've put in place. So now that you've done all of that, we'll come down here and place a block just here. We'll remove these blocks and place one here, then one here, and it looks a bit like a V. We'll then place one more block here with redstone dust all on top of these. Then we want a torch on this block with a redstone dust just here. This redstone dust will be running into a block with a torch on top of it. This torch will have a block with a torch just here. You could hear the door temporarily open before the redstone torch turned off. So that is the bottom and middle layer linked up to opening the door. The next step to linking them all up is to link the top one to all of the others. So we're gonna place a block here and a block here, remove this block and place a redstone dust here. Then we want a torch on here and a block with redstone dust there. Then a torch just there. And now believe it or not, that is all of them linked up. Let's give it a try. Oh, and I almost forgot, before activating it for the first time, you need to fill in the first droppers with any old item. Without this, the RS gnaw latches won't work and they are the key to success. Now that we've got all that sorted, we can try it for the first time. So I'll put in my combination, which is X. And the door does in fact open. Now we can't close it because we haven't hooked up the reset system yet, but we'll get to that now. So what the reset system does is it basically activates all of these droppers, moving the item from there into this one to reset it, hence the name. So to start it off, we're going to place two solid blocks here with a torch just here. We then want redstone dust here and here with glass just above it there. We want another glass here with redstone dust here and here. Then we'll place a block here with a torch on it like so and another block here with again torch on it. This will then have a block on top of it with blocks running along here and redstone across there. So what we've managed to do here is we've hooked up the top layer and the middle layer at the same time. Now all we've got to do is the bottom layer and to do that we want to go down two blocks like this and place a redstone dust here. Then we'll place redstone repeater facing this way with a block just there. 
Underneath this block, you want redstone dust, and this redstone dust will run into a block with a torch on it, just like that. This torch will then be powering this redstone dust, which will go along these three blocks, just there. Then we want target blocks which are very useful to redirect the redstone signal into these blocks. Now that is the whole reset system done and you can see that some of these comparators are powered right now but once we press this they are going to be unpowered. You may be thinking, but Loopy, that doesn't explain how this button can close this door. Well that's because we haven't actually set up the circuit for that. However, it does actually kind of explain it because it is another reset button in a way because it just unpowers all of these comparators which will unpower this torch which will unpower this door. Basically, there's a lot of unpowering. And to set up the system, all we want is a torch just here with redstone dust here. This redstone dust will then run into a block with a torch on it just there with another block and another piece of redstone dust there. Then we want two more blocks with redstone dust on and you can see that it's connected to a different circuit and we don't want that. All we need to do to fix that is to just put a solid block there and you can see they are now disconnected. So that has connected up the top and middle layers but now we need to connect the bottom. And to do that all we need to do is place a torch just here with a block and redstone dust. Again they are connected and all we need to do is place a solid block to separate them. Then we want redstone dust along here, connecting up these redstone lines. And believe it or not, that is in fact the whole reset system done and we can test it out by pressing this button and it should close the door, which it has. Brilliant. Now, admittedly, that was quite a complicated build, but congratulations if you've made it this far in the video because it will definitely be worth it. Okay, so this is the final test now that it's all completed and it should work by putting in our combination. The door has opened and to close it, we press this, the door has closed and we can walk through just like that. We can also test that if we press the wrong button at any time, so these are the right buttons, but then if we press a wrong button, it does close. And if we want to fix that, press this and then put in our combination again. Now, unfortunately, that brings an end to this video, but thank you very much for watching and I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, maybe consider subscribing because it really, really does mean a lot to me. We're already at 2.5 thousand subscribers. Insane. But anyway, that's all from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.